Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. And in this particular video, we're going to be talking about a really, really important test that you need to know and understand if you're taking any sort of algebra course. Now, one of the biggest topics in algebra is this topic of functions, okay? This is a huge topic. It's those things that have this like f of x. Now, there could be other uh, names of functions, but when you see things in uh, algebra or advanced mathematics and there is some sort of function, i.e. an exponential function, a quadratic function, a linear function, I can go on and on and on. This word has a very specific meaning and definition. You really study a tremendous amount about functions, things like domain, range, inverse functions, the graph of functions. Again, it's a huge topic in algebra, one you absolutely need to know. And along with this, there is a very, very important little test that you need to understand. And it's not a difficult test, but you need to understand it. And it is called the VLT. Okay, so you better know this uh, if you're taking any sort of algebra course. So my question to you is, what is the VLT? Now, if you uh, heard of this test, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. And just in your own words, tell me what is the VLT and how do you use it? I'll go ahead and show you the correct answer in just one second. And then I'm going to go ahead and give you a fast little mini lesson on this very important algebra topic. Also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this right now. By the way, you would start studying uh, the VLT typically in like your first year algebra course. So if you're in like a basic, maybe like pre-algebra, you may not um, um, have yet learned about the VLT, but definitely if you're like in an algebra one course, certainly algebra two, uh, college algebra courses like that, this is something you absolutely should have learned. But the VLT, is something called the vertical line test. That's what the VLT stands for. It's an acronym, again, vertical line test. And it's a way to determine if a graph represents a function. All right, so this is just kind of my um, uh, definition of it. So if you have something similar to that, that's uh, outstanding. Okay, so you're like, oh yeah, I know what that is. Well, listen, if you got this right, let's go ahead and give you a nice little happy face in A plus, a 100% and a few stars so you can tell your friends and family that yes, indeed, you could determine whether a graph represents a function by utilizing the VLT, the vertical line test. And before we um, move on to what it is, there is another test as well called the HLT, and you probably guessed the, that this H stands for the horizontal line test. So I'll tell you what that's about as well. Again, this is gonna be a little mini lesson on uh, this specific little facet of functions. But this is a huge topic. If you need help with functions and algebra in general, in other words, domain, range, inverse functions, step functions, recursive functions, all that stuff, I'm gonna direct you towards my Algebra 1 course, or maybe like my Algebra 2 course. If you're at a more advanced level, then you might wanna check out my pre-calculus course. Again, you can find all those courses at my Math Help program. All right, so what is the VLT? All right, so again, I already told you, it's a graphical way to determine uh, whether a graph represents a function, uh, and we call it the vertical line test. So let's go ahead and just um, uh, draw a vertical. No, let's just do, let's start off with something super easy. So here is uh, a line, right? My sketch of a line could be something like y equals 2x plus 1. So this would be the graph of a linear equation, a linear equation. Now, you might uh, remember in algebra, we also could refer to these as linear functions, right? So it is a function, but how can we um, kind of verify that? Well, let's suppose we just have this line right here. We can utilize the vertical line test, all right? So the vertical line test is the following. If I can draw a vertical line, all right, and I'm just sketching it through, there's my little sketch of a vertical line, and it intersects the graph only one time, okay, and anywhere I draw a vertical line, okay, across the entire graph, if it only intersects the graph one time, that graph represents a function, all right? So that's more or less 
the vertical line test. It's super easy. You can see here, no matter where I draw a vertical line, it's only going to go through this uh, line right here one time. So this graph passes the vertical line test, indicating it is a function. Now let's go and take a look at another example. All right. So how about a parabola, right? So this would be a quadratic function, right? So we talk about like graphing a parabola, graph a quadratic equation. Uh, again, uh, your the chapter name that you would be studying for most textbooks or courses would be like uh, quadratic functions. So, well, maybe this is indeed a quadratic function. So let's say the graph of this is something like y equals x squared plus 1. All right, so this would be a quadratic equation. If I wanted to uh, graph this quadratic equation, it might look something like this. Uh, this would be one right there. But let's suppose I didn't know the graph, right? Let's say I just had this thing right here. And the question was, does this equation represent a function? Okay. Now, if you could graph it, right, you'd be like, well, here's the graph. Maybe you used your graphing calculator. Now we can employ the vertical line test. So we could be like, okay, let's see, draw a vertical line here. If I draw one here, this is only crossing through one time, one time, draw it right here, one time, right here. So you can just see anywhere I, uh, you know, draw a vertical line, it's going to go through the graph only one time. Now, a parabola, don't let my little sketch here kind of bother you. This thing is going to continue to open up wide. It's not going to like go perfectly like vertical here. So don't be like, well, isn't it, doesn't it going to kind of do this business? And then like right here, it goes to multiple times. No, not, a, not in this case, a parabola, just it's a big U shaped graph. So you can see again, this passes the vertical line test. All right. So quadratic functions, quadratic equations um, are indeed functions. All right, how about something like this? All right, ready? this could represent a, a polynomial function, right? And let's see here, we have one, two, three. So this could be like a third degree polynomial function with three real roots. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about there, that's not ultra critical, but let's suppose I said, hey, is this a function? And if it is a function, what is the domain of this function, right? So first of all, we have to, you know, use the VLT to see, oh yes, it is uh, It is a function. Any, anywhere I draw that vertical line across this graph, it's only intersecting one time, no problem. Now, how to determine the domain, that's a separate question. But uh, again, you get the idea that before we answer a question about something being um, a function or specific things, when we talk about domain and range of a function, we have to first determine whether something is a function or not. Okay, so let's take a look at an example of something that is not a function. So here's my little lovely sketch of a circle. Okay, so here is where something fails the VLT. So here's a vertical line. It crosses through one time, I'm sorry, more than once. So this fails, this fails the VLT. Now there's a very good reason why it fails. Here we have an X value right here on this line. And this X value is going to two Y values. So effectively you have one X going to two Y values. This would be an X coordinate, the same X coordinate here. That would be one Y value, this uh, same X coordinate, right? This is a bad vertical line, but you kind of get the idea. So when you have one input value trying to go to two different output values, this is a no, no, this can't happen in terms of a function. Now, if you're like mm, a little bit lost, what I'm just saying right there, that's okay. What that just means that you need to kind of, um, you know, really kind of study and review the other concepts of functions, which is, again, it's a big, big deal. Okay. In terms of, uh, independent variable, uh, dependent variable, uh, you know, and all the different ways you can look at functions. Okay. There's different ways we can model functions using mapping diagrams, etc. So if this is not a function, then what is this thing? Well, a circle, uh, would be an equation. something like this X squared plus Y squared is equal to like say 25, which would be the radius squared in algebra and mathematics we call this a relation okay so effectively what's going on is that all these kind of like graphs uh, would be relations that's kind of 
write that a little bit better, although I am a ter terrible speller. Relations, hopefully I did that right. Okay, so uh, anything kind of graphically, more, more or less, when you have points connected together and you can create some sort of graph is a relation. Some relations are functions, okay? So all functions are relations and some relations are functions, okay? The way we can determine, again, is through the vertical line test. Let's take a look at another example of something that fails uh, the vertical line test. And it would be, again, a relation that you would study later on when you study something like conic sections, more advanced math like pre-calculus, uh, something like an ellipse. Okay, so an ellipse is just like an oval shape. We can clearly see that this is gonna fail the vertical line test that's crossing through the point more than once, okay? All right, so hopefully that kind of clears things up. And by the way, too, let's suppose you had something that um, kind of went like this, uh, kind of, let's see here, uh, I'm trying to come up with a situation that pa that fails. I can't really think of something, but maybe something like this, right? I'm just kind of coming up with mathematically, it's hard for me to even think of a function that <laughs> looks like this. But here, again, it's like, well, this fails right here, but even though it passes over here, anywhere along that graph, uh, if you can get a vertical line to, you know, go through more than once, that's just enough to make that graph fail the um, vertical line test. Okay, so let's talk about this uh, HLT. So the VLT, that determines whether something is a function. So how about uh, the HLT? So real quick on the HLT, uh, what this is about, okay, it's a horizontal line test, all right? So HLT, horizontal line test. So obviously we're going to like draw a horizontal line through our graph and basically you know it's going to work the same thing as the vlt it's just now a horizontal line so here are just to recall let me kind of back up here for a second here is our uh, quadratic function our parabola it passes the vlt okay no problem this is a function but when we look at it from the, an HLT standpoint, okay, this way, it fails, all right? So it fails the HLT. So what does the horizontal line test tell us? Well, it tells us whether a function is what we call a one-to-one -one function, okay? And one-to-one -one functions have function inverses, okay? Uh, so quadratic functions would not have a function inverse. So that's just a little, you know, extra bonus here that there is another test out there. So the VLT, HLT, things that you absolutely need to understand. Again, not difficult, but again, this is in a bigger context of all the things that you need to understand about functions. But just remember the root word of functions is fun. And if with a good attitude, you know, if you make this fun, I know some of you are like, oh, fun, what are you talking about, Mr. YouTube Math Man? I hate algebra. I just got to take this class so I can get my degree or I take this class to get through high school. Listen, if you have to learn anything, you might as well open yourself up. You know what? Let's get smarter. Let me just learn this stuff. And who knows? Maybe one day, you know, I'll actually use this. You never know. But if you have to learn it, try to have a good attitude. It will make things go much, much better. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.